welcome to another episode of Shooting the Shit with Rachel Ann and Neil Young. We're talking all things real estate photography business, business growth, mindset, and getting it done. Here come your favorite true entrepreneurs, Rachel Ann and Neil Young, shooting the shit. I have a ferret on the podcast. Like if we're kind of in a slump, like what kind of things do you do? I'm talking like about a boob light. Straddling a power line. Nice photo. And I, Ooh, I need that. I'm like red right now because I'm embarrassed. I go like this. I love it. Hey, come in, come in. Sure. Choose your podcast voice. <laughs> you know, over here, I'm pitting out. Your own's like flipping to the ground. That's a great callback. <laughs> Chit chat. Like, Is that what you call hey! that? Hey! I've never met Alex. I'm I know. Alex. Alex, come be on the podcast. I need a new pen pal. Alex is coming over for dinner. Awesome. You look great for Neil. Come meet Neil. What's up, Neil? Hey, bud. What's going on, dude? I know. I'm like so close to you. Like, like awkwardly <laughs> close to Alex. Here, we can share a <laughs> you guys see, Alex. Can you just be like behind each other and one there of you talk? There we go. Cause up. Just do like, do like heads behind each other and then like swap in and swap out. Like whoever's talking, boop, you go. Now you go. Alex. Greetings, first of Greetings. all. Greetings. <laughs> nice to meet you. I know, right? So cool. I see you on the post and everything like that. Like, for example, today I wanted to talk to you because I saw that post about the whole and I and I wonder if this is how you feel. I don't want to know. Is this how you feel or is that Rachel's words? This impost this idea of an imposter syndrome. Do you feel that way when you're when you're uh, making a reel? Or is it more like just that you have much practice and you feel like it's not gonna be good? I'm going to cut in real quick and just like, so the post was Alex and I were driving to the camera store today mm -hmm. and he was asking me how I deal with imposter syndrome. I literally asked her. That's the verbiage you yeah. used. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I said, how did you, how did you overcome, um, imposter syndrome? Most so when do you, that? I want to know when you feel that way, when does it feel like imposter syndrome? What are you doing specifically? And you feel that way all the time. Like when you're with your photography, like you're shooting, or are you talking about social media reels? Like, what are you actually referring to and having imposter syndrome with your business? Uh, I think what happens is if I talk to you or if I talk to you, I could say, I've got a lot of experience. I'm really confident in what I say. I've got a lot of knowledge in the field of, you know, photography in general and now real estate and architecture. And I could confidently talk about it. Mm -hmm um but i think when it goes out to like the masses um and to mm. say oh yeah you know it's um this that and the other thing about architecture photography where you're making a statement about your specific knowledge does it really you know come across as like uh do i think how it comes across is do i feel like i know what i'm saying or I don't know. You I, lack confidence in your knowledge. Is that what you're saying? Kind of, I, I guess. Yeah. When it comes to like putting it out in the public to the masses, um, I, I guess I don't really know how to explain Or do it. you feel like you don't want to come across as a, like a know-it-all or something that you know better than somebody yeah. else? Yeah. I try to, I try to keep humble about mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but I, but, but the funny thing is, is when it's a, one-on-one -on -one or very small group and i know i'm the expert teaching somebody i love to teach i've done a lot a lot of teaching about photography just in general and whatnot i'm very confident in that yeah well i think maybe maybe and i can totally get that and, I, and the reason i want to talk about this because i feel like a ton of people feel the same way myself included at times when we're talking about depending on what it is we're talking about right um I think that's interesting that maybe in an environment where it's a closed environment that there's 10 people in front of you and they're asking for your help. Yes, you are the authority in the room and clearly you're going to help them with the information you have. But maybe potentially when you throw it out to the world, you're thinking about 20 other people you've seen on social media that have been doing it 10 years longer than you and yeah. feeling like, well, I don't know as much as them. Should I say anything at all? Yeah, because right? then all the experts that you look up to, all of the people that you have learned from, now potentially they're going to see it, and and that's where things get a little. And you're like, are they going to be like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, he's wrong he's about one of those things he said, or I could say it said it better than him, or whatever. Even if you weren't wrong, it's just like maybe I missed something I should have said, or whatever. I totally get that, but 
to counter that. I don't, you know, I'm on a podcast and I totally get that. But the way that helps me, I think, with that is not that I know it all. I certainly do not know it all. And I'm sure there's a million people that know more than me. But I do think that what I know so far is valuable to a lot of the other people out there. I think maybe those 20 people that have been doing it 20 years more than me, it, they, they, it might not be valuable to, but I'm not, that's just, I don't picture that I'm talking to them. And I'm picturing that I'm talking to the 10 people in that room that yeah. really could benefit from what I have to say. And it will help them get to the next level. And then they're going to find the next information they need from wherever it might be me. It might be somebody else who has that experience. So I think if we can all just realize that we can, we can help other people with the knowledge that we have, it might not be for everybody. And, and it's hard because you are sending it to everybody, but it's not going to be received by everybody. But the people who need it are going to get something that helps them get one step further, two steps further. Maybe you can focus on that and that might help. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And, and that's what <clears> I, I try to think is like all of the people that are in a place where I was, you know, five, 10 years ago mm -hmm. that are just getting into it and just, you know, yeah, they're or yeah. looking for anything, any type of information coming from really anybody. Um, that's the key. I like that. That's the key right there. That's Talk to yourself a year yes. ago. Talk to yourself five years ago. Yes. If you're like I would, and even say that, if you're like I was five years ago, I would have died to know the few things that I've learned. I know I don't know it all yet, but this is the stuff I would have, I would have to tell myself five years ago. Now, here, this will help you. That's gold. Yeah. That's, no, that's a killer hook too, by the way. That's perfect. So people <laughs> be like, wait, what was he going to say to his past self? That's cool. Yes. Think yes. of it that way. Yeah. Anybody who's in my position a year ago, five years ago, whatever, and could use some help, this stuff's going to help you out. If you choose yeah. your audience who you're oh, talking to, that will help you, right? I'm, you're in your head specifically talking to people who are a year in or people who are brand new to real estate photography. If you think about it that way, it might not feel as like you're trying to teach the people that are your teachers. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that would feel pretty fake, right? <laughs> and, I, and I think there's a lot of people out there that – that do that a lot of the content that I end up consuming are mm -hmm. potentially people that are, they, they sound like they know what they're, they're talking about, but maybe they're lying. Maybe they don't, maybe they're just faking it until they make it. Yeah. They're yeah. doing a good job of it, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, there yeah. definitely I mean, are and... fakes on social media, like people that make <clears throat> almost a fake appearance of who they are and a lot of showboats out there who, you know, flaunt that they have all this money and they have it all figured out and they're, mm -hmm you know, trying to sell their services and yeah. you, you just got to be weary of that. And yeah, just be genuine yourself, like put out yeah. what you would want. And I think if you feel that way, call it out. It's just like an improv comedy when you needed to call out something or it was going to come across as fake or not believable or whatever. If you call out, Hey, I don't know it all. I'm just sharing my experience and this is what I've learned. And I hope that it might help you. It's not the only answer maybe, but it's, it's something that hopefully will help you. If you come from that perspective, then I think it's It'll easier. diffuse the trolls. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. They do that a lot. If you watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of people say, Hey, just, just my opinion. But right. This is what I, 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 this is what I think. Time. Like I'm not, I, I, you know, I may not be the, the, the best expert in this, but this is just my experience. This is what works for me. Yeah. And then there's, there are a lot of ways to do everything on the planet, honestly. So yeah, you just come from that angle. Hey, this, this is what I found that works for me and saved my butt a bunch of times. Hopefully it'll help you. Yeah. yeah. And one thing to remember too, like if, if you remember that people are just people, like sometimes we're putting out content and we know that some of these industry leaders are going to see it and you're like, you get a little bit of that, mm -hmm. um, like, what do they call that fame shock or whatever? Like. I don't know what they call it, but like when there's a famous person and you have to talk to them, you get all like starstruck. You get starstruck, oh, starstruck. a little starstruck. bit. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, oh my like gosh. And it makes you. The famous person I'm sitting next to. Oh, shut up. I'm not famous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you think about it like they're just people, just like you and me. They eat, yeah. they shit, they sleep. <laughs> like, you know, they do it yeah. all. So it's, yeah. I, on Wednesday of this week, we had our master Everybody plan. eats and shits, Rachel? Everyone, even girls. I know it's what? shocking. Uh, shocking. Rachel. Sorry to break it to you, boys. Come on. That's not true. What's We're talking about I... speaking the truth now. I heard, uh, um, it, yeah, it was like a celebrity talking about how people get uh, starstruck. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you have to remember, they are people. 
They mm-hmm. do sleep just like you, and they still put on pants in the morning. Yeah, exactly. That's a nicer way to put it than I did. <laughs> and they shit. And they shit. <laughs> They it's wake true. up, they it's take true. a dump. I mean, yeah. uh, big old so, dump. <laughs> <laughs> we just had our uh, our premiere for Master Plan. We had our season two premiere party at a Sotheby's oh, office yeah, in yeah. downtown Kirkland, Washington. Like super swanky office, like all these high-end brokers. They're all dressed in designer. They're just done up perfect. And like two days before the conference, um, Dan was like, hey, Rachel, I think you should tell your story and maybe just explain your perspective of Master Plan. And I'm like, the owner of Sotheby's was supposed to be there. Sydney Rice from the Seahawks was supposed to be there. Lofa Tatupu's on our show. He's an ex-Seahawk player. Ellen Taylor was on Q13, and like such a local TV show doing like the lifestyle story. She has a big podcast. She was on radio. Like these are influential, like famous people in our town, in our area. And I'm like, I have to get up and tell my story. Like, oh boy, okay, I can do it. So I literally just practice my speech out loud, very animated in the mirror. I think I probably did it like 10 times all the way through. And just practicing it like that was, that would have been good content. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Okay, I gave you a cycle video. All right, I did finally put that out, go find it. Uh, But anyways, by practicing like that and really, and I, my husband and I were driving together and I was like, okay, I'm pretty solid in what I'm gonna say. I was like, I'm just going to run through it in my head. So just don't talk for to me for a few minutes. And he was like, I go, or I should just do it out loud, huh? And he goes, yeah, do it. So I did it out loud with him about three times mm. on the way there. And then when I got up to actually say it in front of everyone, it was just so much easier because I yeah. had, I knew the inflection in my voice. I had watched a YouTube video, a little mini Ted talk on body language and how to give a good speech. And then I got some great cues out of that, like what to do with your hands, because that's one of the biggest mm. things. Like, do you cross them in front of you? Do you never put them in your pockets? You know, <laughs> there's all these rules. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. Hands are up in front of his face. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, all good stuff. So I just did my research and I practiced. And I think for everyone who's creating content on social media, mm. practicing is key. Like practice what you're going to say, say it out loud. And you want to be over animated and add in the slight pauses, add the drama with getting your voice down quieter, like something really dramatic is going to happen. And then it, it does and you get really excited. And, you know, that inflection in your voice really helps tell your story and guide your listener through what you're trying to convey to them. And it's like improv us, and stuff, tell right? us and yeah, and tell, tell a good a story. story. Yeah. And, and you want to make them laugh and feel excited. So you have to. Oh create that through the different ways that you maybe, communicate. Maybe I need to take an improv class. That would be- <laughs> we should yeah. do that. That would be fun. I'll Honestly, go with you. improv class is a great, great way to kind of break out of your, you know, rut or whatever, get more comfortable. Cause yeah, you're in a room and at least it's only like, you're only embarrassing yourself in front of maybe 10 people and they're all embarrassing themselves too. So it's kind of a good place to do that kind of thing. There's what's that saying about, there's a, a quote, something like, I'm going to butcher it, but uh, theater is a safe place to do unsafe things. Mm. You can like take risks mm. that you'd be embarrassed to yeah. do in front of like your friends and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Well, the yeah. risk part is the thing that I'm like, it, it seems like a great idea in my head. And I'm like, eh, eh, like, uh, the clip I, I sent you fr- from today, mm-hmm. I, I did it like eight times. That's okay. And all you it was, see was my like, clips. I have so many, Hey, what's up? I'm here at you know, side yes. hustle brewery doing a photo yes. shoot. That's all it was. I literally, I literally just did a post about, okay, this is take 20. And I did one of those like <laughs> question polls. I'm like, is this good enough? And you know, you know, I, and I did the little quote in parentheses, you know, perfection's the enemy of progress or no, take 21 is going to be better. Keep going. Actually, that, <laughs> that would be a great post. So for every take that you do, you say take one and then you can like edit it out when you, you know, mm. but then you just take all of those takes, <laughs> put them together in a video yeah. and then ask your social media people, like what take do you like the best? Yeah. You pick. Yeah. Boom. But I, when I do tip Tuesday, hard. I do so many, like my whole gallery is just filled with talking oh, head yeah. videos. I'm like, okay, I got to just delete all of these except yeah. the one. It's a good point too. That I think that everybody thinks that, they see these reels and they think, oh, they probably, they did one take or, and maybe they do after doing it for weeks, you know, maybe they only take some, a couple takes, but yeah, I mean, 
I did a screen recording and I used to do them on a daily basis at my old tech job to help people learn how to use our system. And I just did a screen recording and it literally was 10 takes. And I still was like, I screwed up that one thing. Let's do it one more time. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but then there is that, like, you do have to find that, like, all right, that's good enough. It's time to put a post out there. And totally do another post tomorrow and it'll get a little better tomorrow too. Not just this one post trying to be perfect. It's really hard to do, but yeah. And one thing that I realized on Wednesday night after that speech is like, I had four main sections that I needed to talk about, right? Yep. I needed to introduce myself. I needed to talk about uh, what's coming down the pipeline for master plan. And then I need to mm -hmm. talk about how uh, a little bit of like the power of belief Mm -hmm. a little motivational bit in there and then how dan met uh john curley from evening magazine sought him out and he now critiques <laughs> our he's like a famous guy in our town yeah john and he curley. like yeah and he like critiqued our our season one episodes and told us that we needed more of a framework and more formula mm -hmm. to it so anyways so those were my like four sections that i needed to talk about so when i was practicing that speech like 10 times like each one was different but i knew my four bullet points that i yes. needed to hit on and i had little different renditions of it. And some of them I liked more, some of them I, you know, it just came out, you yeah. know? So when I was up there doing the speech there, I got most of it in. There was one little joke that I, I wanted mm -hmm. to add that I forgot, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's really, you just come up with the framework and you just I have like... the outline of what you're going to talk about. You yes. know what you're going to say, like, you know, this content and what you're putting out. It's not like you just learn this new technique and you're trying to teach it to someone. It's like, yeah. you've been doing this forever. Just have your bullet points, have it written down on a piece of paper so that you're yeah. a little organized, you know, and then just go off the bullet points and you can record one sentence at a time and you yeah. can cut it up. You can pause and then cut it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, so how did they receive it. your, how did they receive your speech? They loved it. They loved hey. it. Yeah. I, I told them about my story. And at the end of like my last line about the story was that I'm proud to say that we are one of the top real estate photographies in the Seattle area. Did awesome. I say that right? We are one of the top real estate photography town. businesses in the Seattle area until, yeah. until, moved until Alex moved to uh -oh. uh -oh. Anyways, but they all like hooted and hollered <laughs> and clapped for me, which felt amazing. Nice. And then the whole bit about like Dan going out and becoming friends with John Curley, I was like, and Dan in true Dan fashion went out and befriended John Curley from Evening Magazine. Like who does that? <laughs> I was like this guy, <laughs> you know? And then I continued into the story and they were laughing. So for me, it's like, if I can get them to laugh, I can get them to clap. I can get them, you know, I hit on their pain points a little bit when I talked about how like everyone's telling you to do video, do video, but you know, none of you in this room, most of you in this room at least are not actors. You're not media personalities and you don't, you're not trained in video. You know, and I kind of leaned my head to the side because that shows empathy. And I made eye contact with different people in the audience and I could see them nodding their head like, yeah, yeah, I feel that way. So I really was able to connect with the audience on some of those pain points that I was touching on, right? And then I came at them with our solution. I was like, we have the three C's coming down the, pi down the pipeline. We've got courses, conventions, and coaching. And mm -hmm. it's all gonna, to help you, all gonna benefit you and help you become better on video. Yeah. So. I want me just to do the speech. No. <laughs> oh my kidding. God. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, I want a, a real. That was probably most of it. Uh, that was most of it. <laughs> and my oh. story. I got divorced and started my business and got it up and running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and well, here's Sorry, the guys. thing people are going to write it off and go, and I, I have the same reaction as like, well, Rachel's fearless. Like, you know what I mean? And you are a little bit, but you were probably scared, right? Do you even, I don't think people understand how much I have grown as a person in the last six years. Like prior to me getting divorced, I was so insecure. Like I, I always came across as secure, but mm -hmm. I was terrified inside. I was very <clears throat> self-conscious. I never felt like I fit in. You know, it's like through this journey of like all these self-help books that I've been listening to and finding my purpose, having a business that I love, finding a creative outlet, like I, I just have more to talk about with more depth. You know, I really felt like I just, there was more to life and I knew there was more to life and I was missing out on so much. And I was like, I've got to, like, I just need to elevate to this next, like, it's like, I just, I don't know, a new vibration or something that I'm elevating on. Also, I found God. So that I start, I was an atheist before. I got divorced and 
the last like year or two before I got divorced, I started going to a counselor who was talking to me about the Bible. And then I started reading the Bible and I quickly became a believer. So, and I haven't looked back since. So, I mean, for me, I think that was the big switch was Mm. just following God. And I got baptized this year and it felt great. And I just, I know he has a plan for me and I trust in him. You know, I kind of like, I release my, my stress to him. All I can do is be who I am in this moment right now. Like all Mm. I have is right now. I'm not going to worry about the future because I can't do anything about that. And I can't change the past. So I'm going to do everything I can to be the best version of myself now and to help other people be a positive light, touch people, do nice gestures, whatever I can just to leave a good footprint. Yeah. And let go a little bit of the control, right? A little little trust and a little faith. There you go. Yeah. And let, and know that God has a plan for me and he's going to take care of me. Like, obviously I'm going to go through trials, but that's helping my soul to evolve. That's helping me to grow as a person. And it's, there's a reason why certain things happen, you know, and you might not see that reason of why this shitty thing is happening to you right now, but I guarantee you in two months, two years, or, you know, 10 years, you're going to look back on that. And you probably learned something from that experience that now has made you a better person or, you know, more well-equipped to handle a situation that you couldn't handle in the past. Oh yeah. You know, so just trust and know that everything happens for a reason. And God's got your back. If you ask him for help, he'll help you. I think the the control part is the hardest thing <clears throat> that most people have a hard time let, letting go. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's probably one of the biggest things that affects me <clears throat> when it comes to imposter syndrome, fear of doing social media stuff, is there's some form of control that is either me controlling uh there, there, that's a part of the release. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I don't yeah, you know. gotta, you got no, you gotta, you gotta let go a little bit just to put that post out there, even because you are letting go, you're letting that out to the world, and it goes. You don't really get to control where it goes and mm-hmm. what people's perspective is going to be, even. So I think that is part of it. Is that you know maybe it's not perfect, maybe it's not the best thing in the world, but you're just gonna go okay. But I'm gonna put it out there, or like even letting go of the the. <clears throat> being self-conscious like yes you know so somehow you're controlling that because you feel like it keeps you safe Mm. you know like you feel like uh well if i if i let that go then uh, i won't be humble about my success Mm. right Mm. so if 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 you do let that go and you're like i'm not i i'm proud of my success. I'm not self, self-conscious about it. Uh, then mm-hmm. do I come sure. across as, you know, do I, am I braggy? Am I too, you know what I mean? Like, am I overconfident about it? Like, am I braggy? Do I look like really sometimes. full of myself <laughs> on social media? Sometimes I look at my social media and I'm like, goodness, Rachel, could you have another freaking like, picture of yourself? Like too <laughs> cocky, right? Like you get, but I don't think anything that you're, t- hey, any, he's pointing at me. Stop it. Else. <laughs> no, <laughs> but again, I, I think but that, you know what I mean? Like there's that. No, oh, I understand. I understand. You're yeah. not being cocky. You're being, you're providing service to other photographers who want to be yeah. like you. I know. But if you let go of the control of being too, uh, like reserved, uh, reserved, mm-hmm. then are you just arrogant? What is the opposite? Are you just deep down, really right? Arrogant? Do, 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 do yeah. like I have a, personality of extremes so if i if if i get rid of being reserved then am i going to be too yeah have you seen neil neil's extreme in a good way extreme but he's extreme (laughs) but he's confident and he's competent and he's fun like that's just who he is that's his he's like come into his personality and that's how i feel like that was all part of wanting to do this podcast was to develop my character help me figure out how to use my voice how to tell stories like you learn all these things as you start being more vocal and being on camera more and it, it's yeah. fun it's what you are you're you need to find and develop what your voice sounds like and how you're coming across to people and it's not only going to help you with marketing on your business but it's going to help you to have conversations with your clients have deeper conversations with your friends yeah, and your family. I, totally I mean, it just, it deepens everything. It's amazing. I think part of it is your perspective and where you're coming from and why you're sharing what you're sharing. It, it will help it to not be, come off as braggy or arrogant or know-it-all. 
if it if it comes from a, a genuine place of helping people, um, I don't think it will be received that way, no matter how much you talk about stuff. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Because in person, in right. person, I, it, there's it's if you're helping people all good, like easy, right? I can talk to people really well. I have yeah. impeccable customer service. I have yeah. <clears throat> just the way I treat people, the way I help yeah. people, the way I educate, like, Hey, you know, I need you to do this, but it's in an educational way. So they feel comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's mm -hmm. no, if you're doing it to help someone else, yeah. I don't think it's going to be received that way. If that's genuinely where it comes from, I think it'd be very, very unlikely that that's how it's received. If you're going to put all this stuff out to the world just to show off, then yeah, I think it's going to start to be received that way. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's your intention, I think, has a lot to do with it. And I think, yeah, I'm a helper. And I think if I put stuff out there, if we actually go with our content, whatever we put out there with some goal to help our clients or help other photographers, um, then I don't think it's, if it's genuine and you're really just trying, even if you fail, I think that it's not going to be received negatively because the intention was good. I agree. hundred percent. Be authentic, be yourself. Yeah. Did you deal with, have you ever dealt with uh, imposter syndrome? Just through I, the yeah, of oh, your business? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, even just, yeah, right now okay, doing, so a, doing quick, a podcast. <laughs> so for those yeah. of you who don't know, imposter syndrome is when you feel mm. like you're not good enough to be speaking on a, on a subject or not good enough to be doing the job that you're doing. Like you're doubting yourself, right? Yeah. Like I always see these social media uh, <clears throat> courses online, these people that have been doing social media for years, they have 200,000 followers and they're putting out a course. And I'm like, why would anyone buy my course when she is obviously more of an authority than I am? Like, what do I, what do I have, you know? So it's, that's what imposter syndrome is. Okay. Yeah. Now, Neil, yeah. why don't you explain yeah. when you've had it? Yeah. Especially when you see people that are an authority and have been an authority for so long and maybe know a lot more than you do, you think, well, who am I to talk about this topic, even on a similar tangent, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. No, I've definitely felt that way. And I've done YouTube videos and stuff and try dabbled here and there, even going into and stand up comedy, you guess what, you're going to feel like, who am I to get on stage and whatever. But uh, what help has helped me is what I said, which is just if you're coming from a standpoint of what you share can help other people, even though you don't know everything, I think anybody who thinks that they know everything is wrong. <laughs> so we can't all know everything. So if you just come from the standpoint of sharing what you know, so even on this podcast where I'm on here with Rachel, who's been doing it six years, I haven't been doing it six years. So how could you not feel like a little bit of a imposter being on a show with somebody who's been doing it way longer than you? Well, this is how I have my own perspective. I, I phrase it to everybody like, hey, Rachel has been at this six years and she's got a team and she's got this perspective. I might be, you might like my perspective because you're probably where I am and you just started or you've only been at a year and a lot of the stuff that Rachel has can help both of us or something that I just went through could help you directly because I'm fresh through it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to find a way to just understand for yourself what is it you can offer and then express it that way to everybody else and that'll help you feel less like an imposter. And I'm not going to try and tell everybody I know everything. I'm going to try not, you know, I might fail and sometimes talk about something maybe I didn't know enough about and not realize till later because you don't know what you don't know. But all I, I can't worry about that. I got to just share what I what I think I currently know. And 10 years from now, I'll probably look back and go, well, I knew nothing back then. You know, yeah. Yeah. But that's what we do as photographers, right? If you look at your first photo, you're like, oh, oh man, a year from that, you probably thought you were great. And you probably told everybody, this is how you do it right. A year after that, you'd look back at that again and go, oh God, I can't believe I helped. But you want, you help. Even then you help that person when you were a year in that wasn't a year in. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. And in the car, I told Alex, my answer to this was, yes, I've had imposter syndrome. I gave the example of the, these social media coaches and courses that I'm seeing. Yep. I'm like, why would people buy from me? And I just told him, you know, like every, all of us have a different story to tell and a different yes. examples and a different way that we can relate to people. So and a different way of teaching or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, and we're all at different levels. Like my course is more entry level to social media. It's not advanced. Like I would take that woman's course because I could learn from her MBA in marketing that she has, right? Like the, Mm -hmm. like the high up cool marketing stuff she's doing, like I'm at that level, I'm ready to take that course. But for the people that I'm trying to help more entry level who are just starting, that would be totally overwhelming to them, right? They just need the basics and a good foundation to get going and have some direction. Yeah. I mean, geez, if I, I can teach people how to take a pretty good headshot and I think it helped them people that had no knowledge. But if I was in the room with Peter Hurley and we we're both going to teach right. the lesson, I'd just, I'd sit down. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Scott you, you know what I mean? Yeah. This. Scott, I'm like, Scott, You're like, hey, you Scott. tell I'm taking a yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I'm in a room with a bunch of people Scott, that aren't those people and are making your own role here. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, geez, I'm going to help whoever I can help. But if they're in the room too, I'm sitting down and listening too. <laughs> so one thing that I've been trying to work on that uh, I heard uh, a couple weeks ago is we have to stop putting people and industries on pedestals. It's Mm. something that I realize that I do a lot. I see somebody's doing a podcast, right? You just because you're doing a podcast, it's above and beyond what you're doing. So you put them or that on a pedestal, right? That they're somehow better, right? So now that or they maybe are above you uh mm-hmm. you know rachel you you guys do a podcast so maybe you know rachel's now above me because she does a podcast but i shouldn't do that because it um <clears throat> well it's not good for me it's not good for her and it's not good for just you know trying to yeah so well, yeah i told you in the car my example putting- of that i had there's a company in seattle who's putting out a talking head video every day, like every single day. Mm-hmm. And they're great tips on social media. I love it. I follow it. I watch it. I learn from it. I'm like, that's awesome. But then I get down on myself. I've talked about this on the one of the social yep. media series episodes, mm-hmm. but it's like, I can't beat myself up for what I'm not doing because I am doing my own unique stuff. That's just as cool, you know, yeah. and it's my own way of doing it. So yeah. if you feel that way, maybe you can fuel that and use that as motivation to go out and start making those reels like kick it might just kickstart you a little bit like it's a, that reminder like oh yeah i like what they're doing and that just motivated me to go out and make a reel today yeah so that i can stand out a little bit yeah but don't put that on a pedestal and then say oh my god they're doing that that's so good and then think yeah. that you can't put do yourself that down because you yeah like hmm. why can't you you know hmm. where's the barrier that you're and we don't all here's the thing too we don't all need to do all the things that everybody else is doing no, we don't you're have absolutely to absolutely right <laughs> a lot of people too like you get it's easy to get sucked into in that head i need to be doing this i need to be doing this and this, this. and you get overwhelmed and yeah. you get so overwhelmed you do nothing mm-hmm. right i think yeah. that's right and we don't give it ourselves enough credit either for what we are doing why do we do that or what we have accomplished Mm -hmm. that time in the pool in my backyard we just have this little dinky pool from walmart this little thing it's barely a pool and then one day i was like hey man this is all right dude like you gotta (laughs) your daughter's having fun in the freaking yard you got a house right here you're doing all right dude why don't you give yourself some freaking credit Uh, you know what i mean that is hilarious he said that you know, there's a couple of summers ago, you know, I couldn't afford anything. It was hot. Went to Walmart, <laughs> bought the little, yeah. you know, tiny plastic, whatever. Mm-hmm. And the kids were having a great time. Ended up going over to the neighbors and they got the 15 foot, <laughs> you know, yeah. above ground pool yeah. with the pump mm-hmm. and the ladder and, you're like, and the diving board and this, maybe not a diving board, but, uh, and I was like, Oh man. And then the kids were like, Oh my God, look at this thing. This is amazing. Mm. And I'm like, and you're like, Oh, there goes my $20 like pool. failure as a mm-hmm. father. But, right. but the reality is you're right. You go back and it's like, it doesn't matter. They're having a great time. That's all that matters. I know. You know what? Even like our house, we have, I, we have a nice house, right? It's, but we have so many people in our friend circle that have these crazy, phenomenal, fantastic houses. And every now and again, I'm, I'm just like, can't wait till we have that house. But then every now and again, I go, I watch my daughter and play in the yard and have a blast. And I go, you know what? Remember all those houses you grew up in and you love them so much. They weren't mansions, 
And if you could buy that house again, you would just to keep it and put it in your back pocket. I mean, you know what I mean? Like she's not going, I wish mommy, daddy lived in a mansion. Sure. She sees a mansion. She's going to think it's freaking cool, but she loves her house. Do you know what I mean? So we're really hard on ourselves. We really, we really yeah. freaking are. It's more about the experiences that you create and the connections that you're making with people in that house. Like I know when you have friends over, no one cares what your house is like, unless it's disgusting, you know, <laughs> or, or there's like a bowling alley. I mean, that's pretty cool. But yeah. for the most part, like, it really doesn't matter. It's the, it's the memories yeah. that you make. It's the connections that you make. Like you could be the richest man on the planet and just have a miserable life. Like money isn't going to buy you happiness, which we all know. But and we, and I, listen, I want, I want a vacation house and I want all these things and there's nothing wrong with wanting those things, but we don't, but we also have to enjoy what we currently have. Right. Um, we did the sale of the day. We went to a friend, we got invited. We don't do a lot. We don't have a lot of friends. We don't go out a lot and we're kind of hard on ourselves about that even. And some, one of the agents we did photos with, we were becoming a little friends with them and they invited us over for dinner. We went to their house and they have this awesome, cool house. And we had played all these fun games. And it was a blast and everything. We left and, and Heidi looks at me in a car ride home and she's like, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, no, no. It's not what we're doing wrong. Yes, we want the same thing that they already have. But I'm like, hey, we're not in the same places there. Look, you just started helping out in the business and now we have two incomes. They already have two incomes. I was in LA for 10 years and I feel like I'm 10 years behind everybody else. If I had started this business 10 years ago, where would I be today? It's okay. We're going to get where we want to go. We're just not on the same path. Just like your acorn story that you've told before on the the podcast. Yeah. We're, we're all in different places on the path, but it's, it's so easy to be hard on ourselves, but every now and again, you just got to give yourself a break and go, hang on, we're doing all right. We're getting there. We're murky. We're making that effort forward. As long as you're progressing to whatever your goal is, then you're doing it. Yep. And the seed to abundance is gratitude. So when you're feeling that way, just list off three or four things in your head. Like, I am so thankful for this house. Like I'm so grateful that I have food on the table. I have a beautiful car, like just start thinking about the things that you have, like appreciate what you have. I know we talked about that like episode two and I haven't thought about that in a long time. And it's such a good point to every now and again, just go, you know, this is all, there's so much great stuff in your life. Don't, don't Mm -hmm. take it for granted your whole freaking life. (laughs) The way you drive yourself crazy. (laughs) The way that I look at that is like, you know, we're all parents, we have kids. So it's like, what are we doing? What we're doing? What are we doing it for? right? I do it for my family. I do it for my kids. Mm -hmm. My kids are happy as hell. They're healthy. They get to eat every day. They get, you know, they're clothed, whatever. And at the end of the day, when they get older and they look back, they're not going to think about, did you have an okay house or a super fancy house? They're going to think about, was I loved? That's That's right. It's all about the love. What's the 1, love of the house? thousand percent. And that's all that matters. So when I look back to my childhood, I think about how did my dad treat me? How did my mom treat me? How much love did they give? And how much time did they spend with me? That's right. My dad didn't spend a lot of, a lot of time with me. My, my mom spent more time with me. And that's really the only thing that I think about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when it comes down such to a it, good point, it's such a good point. Really all that matters. If your kids are yeah. happy and you, you know, shed a ton of love on them you guys have good family you know dynamic Mm -hmm. then you're doing great life then life is pretty darn sweet life is amazing totally correct 100 percent correct yep absolutely you're gonna remember so deep on this podcast (laughs) that's right but that's what you're gonna love without that's what you're gonna remember oh my god it's so true it's gonna be the uh the therapy podcast yeah we have a life coach coming on next week so (laughs) we'll we'll kind of follow up with that so we got a couple mindset episodes for you guys get ready but you're right after that when you when you think about like somebody that you've lost in your life or whatever yeah you just think about all the the good things and all those good moments that you had together i mean one of my favorite you know we had a nice house growing up and everything like that and that's part of what i judge myself on too is that like i don't have as nice of a house as i have when i was at this age and stuff like that right uh, but you know what one of my fondest memories is is <laughs> my dad I don't know why I don't remember if we couldn't get into the air show or we were too late for there or we didn't have the money for it or whatever it was. I don't remember. But what I remember is we snuck to some abandoned road next to the air, little airport in our town. It's 
much bigger now, but it was very small at the time. It was like this abandoned road. And we watched the air show away from, away from where the actual crowd was because we couldn't get him for whatever reason. And I remember hanging out with my dad and there was a big long board and we like propped it up on a cinder block and we put a soda can on the other end and we're watching planes fly by and we're jumping on the board, seeing how high we can launch a soda can is like one of my favorite freaking memories of being a kid. That's awesome. So simple. Just right? give a kid a stick and they can be happy if they have love. And, what, it didn't and that cost zero dollars. And it didn't yeah. involve a, a, a big fancy pool nope. or nope. a big fancy house nope. or nope. a Lamborghini. It involved nope. nothing really no. but just the two of you and a little creativity and will yeah, it's all that to get her done it's like you're saying my dad was just being a good friggin dad and we were having fun man that's, that's it. it that's awesome i love it it's awesome yeah well guys this was awesome this was fun uh was great thanks so, for coming on the podcast uh, alex yeah. had no idea he was gonna be on the podcast he was coming over for dinner you've done this to me twice now well Sabotage. he was supposed to come later and then he ended I up coming earlier and i was like so i was thinking i was just gonna sit in the room and drink <laughs> <or something. laughs> i know and my husband was supposed to be here like he wasn't supposed, you yeah. weren't supposed to be here until seven and my husband was supposed to be home around seven too so alex is like uh i just wanted some dinner what the hell i know he's like where are my zoodles Where's... and hot dogs that you're is the make me. is yeah, the well, dinner a joke or is that really salad. happening? <laughs> We're having zoodles with hot dogs and salad. <laughs> hot dogs are good. What's, wait, like, what zoodles? It's zucchini noodles, and you shred them in a spiralizer so they come out like noodles. Oh, oh, and then you fry okay. them in a pan. You put salt and pepper and oil in them, and mm. they're delicious. Yeah, guys, if you don't know this, uh, vegetables with a little salt is ridiculous. It's oh, so, so good. good. A little, little cucumber pepper. with a little salt Ooh. and olive oil. Mm. Yeah. And then I have these like kosher hot dogs and I'll cut them up and put them in there. So it'll be like a little pasta. Nice. Yeah. Mm. That's good. I had it. I made it for the kids the other day and they loved it, but I used cauliflower rice instead of uh, Parmesan dip. Oh, sweet. And I have macaroni salad if we need that. So we'll just put smorgage. Smorgage. I can't say it. Now, is that just to be healthy or somebody not have eat meat or what's why, why all the vegetable noodles and rice things? Healthy. Well, healthy. I always try. I, I'm trying not to eat carbs after I knew 3 p.m. I stop and got McDonald's on the way. Here. <laughs> I know. I was gonna say, you didn't. You didn't know the no carbs after three uh, rule at the Atkins. Uh, yeah. uh, I just feel better. I was doing intermittent fasting, so I wasn't eating until like 11 in the morning. But I've been really. I've been working out in the mornings, and I'm hungry, so I've been eating in the mornings, and I'll eat carbs, like you know, eggs and toast or avocado toast or something. And then I have veggies on hand, and I made Uncle Dan's ranch which is so good. You do like half sour cream, half mayo. It's totally not good for you, but I will eat vegetables all day with that ranch. So it fills me up. And then, I mean, I have lunch sometimes too, but, and then dinner, I'm trying to not do carbs. So I'm just trying to eat healthier because I eat, literally I eat like a teenager. Like I eat pizza pockets. I have chicken pot pies, little frozen ones. I eat cereal. I have like, it's just ridiculous. Neil, do you eat like your kids do? So much processed food. This is my problem. My kiddo wants the cereal now, and I always like cereal. Who am I kidding? I can't blame her. But literally, uh, it'll be uh, 11, 12 o'clock at night, and I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. I just want a bowl of cereal. Go get some frosted corn flakes. Yes. That is yeah. not good. And that's where you get a little belly. Yeah. yeah. That cinnamon toast crunch is Do a real Do you just have uh, one? One daughter? Yep. Or, or one belly. I have one belly. <laughs> it's, but it could, it could be perceived as two. <laughs> and your daughter is six yes and i have a stepdaughter uh who's 20. yeah oh, okay awesome yeah what's your yep. daughter's name elsie elsie yep. that's cute my stepdaughter's ava yep my uh so i have a six-year-old daughter her name's isla oh i like that name isla and i have a three-year-old daughter her name's scarlet oh no way and then i have that's... i also have two step oh really boys. That yeah. Are, um, one just turned 15 the other day and one is 16. Oh, wow. Outstanding. So yeah. Or at home. I like to, I don't know. I, I, I always wanted uh, a full orphanage of children running amok. I, I love kids, but um, uh, Heidi's like, no more. <laughs> so maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll adopt. Yeah. That's Maybe we'll adopt some well, later. We'll get one that's already got like a three year head start, you know. <laughs> after our second, um, I'm like, yeah, how, how, how can we make it so we can't have no more? So I went and got that taken care of. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and I always yeah. wanted, well, I wanted none. And then I met my ex husband who had a big family, and I was like, I want five kids. 
And then I had to, and I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I'm good. But yeah. then I got divorced and married my new guy and he's got four kids. So we have six and I love it. Cause, well, they're grown too. I didn't have to raise them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it worked them. out really well. I got my big family. Yeah. I love no, the big families. Work, the yeah. big family's fun. Yeah. 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 Awesome. That's cool. All right. Well, Alex, thank you for being a good sport and opening up on the podcast today. It was delightful to have you the on. Beer it was awesome. Yeah. He's like, wait, I need a beer. <laughs> Go get it. He had shots under the table the whole time. Right. He sn- he's wasted. Snuck actually. off camera. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ton of fun. Thank you to Alex for allowing us to ambush him to being a part of the podcast, whether he yeah. liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> where, where can people uh, find you on social? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Neil. So you can find me at AMF underscore photography on Instagram, uh, AMF photography biz on Facebook. But with the rebrand coming up, I'm going to be blueprint media LLC on Instagram. I haven't figured out Facebook or anything Mm -hmm. else, but I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to be. But awesome. Well, thank you for coming on, Alex. Thanks for pouring your soul out and telling all your deepest, darkest fears and insecurities. Really appreciate it. I think everybody's going to really relate to it. It's really awesome. Cool, man. I got to go call my therapy and cry to her. (laughs) Call your therapist. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, (laughs) can we get in on the call too? Or are we? (laughs) Can we record this, please? Can we? Everything is content. (laughs) Everything. That's right. That's right. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, Enjoy right, the guys. rest of your day and go be fearless. Peace. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.